going on? Y'all, it's your boy Darnell Smith. I got my main man show today with me. Today, we got two special guests right here. My OGs, TJ Hushmanzada and my guy Stan Rock. We in the building, man. How y'all doing? Chilling. <laughs> Good, man. How are y'all? Blessed up, man. Happy yeah. to be here with y'all, man. Good to hey, see y'all boys again. Y'all really some OGs. Like, just think about <laughs> it. Yeah, you ain't got to remind us. You ain't got to remind us, bro. Come hey, sure, we, back in the day, bro, we was like 19 years old on the GameCube, playing with the Bengals. <laughs> TJ, no, no lie, I hate throwing, I hate throwing you the Who ball. Who PlayStation is that over there? <laughs> home, what you, home, what you trying to say? Nah, no, no, I I'll heard beat everybody you. ass in here, oh man. Nah, everybody. Okay, we got to run. No that. question. We Stop it. Every, everybody in here. We gonna, I'm gonna bet money on that one. I bet that. I spend, let me spin around. Bet what? Home, bet what? Yeah. Push ups. Yeah. I ain't got the money you got right now. Push ups <laughs> on call. On call. How many? You tell me. Twenty five. Twenty five. On call. Who I'm playing? Who the best at man in here? Who the best in Matt in here? We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Okay, I'm gonna pick somebody. I ain't in here, but I'm in here now, me. Okay, you gonna see. Arguing over Madden. You don't play Madden? <laughs> what you play, Sam? I mean, I play more, probably Mortal Kombat, Need for Speed. Oh, he's an old oh, yeah. head. Need for Speed? Yeah, I ain't heard that yeah. in years. Since I, didn't, I didn't know that still came out. Call of Duty. Okay, okay, okay. That's old head. Nah. Nah, Whoever PlayStation that is, they they really not beat me. They got the disc. They don't even have a downloaded version. They really not beat me. They really not beat me. That's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> anyway, man, let's talk a little you bit. You work too much. Let's talk a little bit about some football, man. You got her teammates there, yeah. TJ, yeah. for the Raiders. And I heard some stories, man. I, I heard Stang to lock you up, TJ. I don't know if it's true or not, but can y'all take us back to those days at practice? Tell me like a story, a memory you guys had just during those Raiders Raider days. Do not bring up 06. Nah, I look. Mm -hmm. Do not so bring up. So I remember when we played the, we played the Raiders. <laughs> we played the Raiders he in the game. He said this shit every time. Right? Yeah. And no lie, at that time the Raiders they was just manning everybody up. Yeah. Man to man, get it how you live. So Marvin Lewis the week leading up to that game was talking shit to me and Chad. If we're only going to win this game if you and Chad can get open. They're going to play man-to-man. -man. They're going to put eight in the box. we got to be able to throw it. Me and Chad had 100 at halftime. At the half? Both of us. That's wait a long. minute. Now, oh, wait a I, minute. I, 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 wait, oh, wait, oh, oh, hold up. In his defense, I, in his defense, <laughs> it was Namdi mm -hmm. and Fabian Fabi. Washington. I will say that. It was Namdi and Fabian. Did Nam not have two picks? Mm. He did made that two did picks. Did Fabian not have a pick in that game? I don't maybe on Carson threw four picks in the game total. We mm. won though. Yeah, y'all did. It was probably you, Chad, Rudy Johnson. I when they, they went the zone. Yeah, yeah. But the Raiders at that point, it was just man to man. Yeah, and was. you had to get open. Right. But that's what me and Chad did. We were able to get open. Um but obviously they were successful because they all played a long time. They all paid a lot of made a lot of money. So shit, one game ain't is not gonna define you. Right. Over the course of their career. They wouldn't have played as long as they did and made what they made if they weren't good. Mm, that's facts. That's a facts, man. Stan, yeah, you always bring up that game. Because <laughs> I, I never I forget I Marvin Lewis. Because y'all did ball. Y'all did Bruh, ball. He literally I, I the know. whole week. You guys walk around here talking all that shit. We're going to see what you're about this week. I'm like, what? Anybody scared of them? Yeah. we the Bengals. We ain't worried about this. <laughs> man, we worked too hard not to be able to get open it, man. That's all we practice and work mm, on. I feel that. Nah, for sure, man. For sure, man. Now, Stan. I want to bring it back to you, man. Let's take it back. Oh, shit. A lot of these guys nowadays, you know, arguing about who's the fastest guy. We, if we raise, we got the fastest 40. Mm -hmm. During your time, what was it back? Was it 05? Oh, 05, oh, five, NFL mm -hmm. draft. At that time, God, that was so long ago. I was in the fifth grade, man. I was in the fifth grade. Hey, wait up. Wait I wasn't going to say nothing. Wait, wait I wasn't going to say nothing. Damn, I was in my fifth year. Yeah, shit, man. yeah. But at that time, man, you had the fastest 40 yard dash. Tell the people real quick, what did you run? And uh, yeah. Oh man, uh, that was 05, the combine, 427. Fabe was right behind me at 429. Mm. And we had Carlos Rogers, 431, 432. Darren Williams, God rest his soul, he was like 433. That was a, it was a real fast class that year. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was the last year that, that uh it was um AstroTurf. At, oh, yeah. Um, at, uh, at the RCA yeah. dome. Yeah. Before, you know, before you went, went to yeah. yeah, field turf, all that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, man, fun time. So so I gotta ask you this, man. Well, you know what people don't realize? Let me hop in on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't realize how big he is. So the majority of guys that's running them fast times, no disrespect, but five, they- Five, nine, five, ten. Yeah. They, they always under six feet for the most part. They're short right. kings. They Just don't they're realize short kings. 
how big he is running that fast. Yeah. That's the thing about it. Nah, it's, it's very impressive. And I was going to ask you, man. A lot of people think Tyreek's the fastest guy in the league right now. Mm. You at your prime. Tyreek in his prime. Who went in that race? Mm. Well, that's a tough one. Mm. You talking about like on the football field or like in the foot race? Nah, football field. Football, football field. You know football speed way different. Oh, man. I can say this. If I miss him at the line, I'm not going to catch him. But if I'm if I'm doing what I need to do with the line, I don't think he's gonna get on top of me on a Terry Kill is just he got quick he, and speed. But he definitely like, but he definitely is a burner. Guys don't no have both, bro. There's no doubt about that. So question for you, he catch a slant, you gotta go chase tackle corner. You beat him, you go beat the angle, or can he beat your angle? You think, uh, you think about how, it. How does he gotta step on me? Two steps, three steps, what? I'm saying you the backside corner. Mm-hmm. Just oh, we'll go three by one. Okay. okay. You do this backside corner. Oh, he ain't catching. One side, him. he ran a slant. He, he ain't catching. Oh, you mean like we look like we iso over here? No, no, you on the opposite side. You got to meet him. He see the side oh, receiver. You backside. Yeah, I got on the trip side. Yeah, the corner. So you got the whole field. Yeah. Can he beat your angle? No, he ain't beat my angle. Okay. Ah, he gonna, he gonna, make sure. he gonna beat that. You know why he gonna beat that angle? Because he gonna be eyes on his up. receiver. By the time Tyreek Hill catch that ball and he realize he got to go get him. Tyreek Hill already at full speed. Now he gotta go. Yeah. So you don't got no recovery speed. Nah, that boy just fast. <laughs> now he gonna catch, he gonna beat my angle, but he ain't beating Tyreek Hill. He gonna keep, he gonna keep my angle. Watch y'all catch him. Yeah. Make sure he ain't talking about yeah. ball too. You know what I mean? Like, nah. I don't know. What Tyreek run at the combine? Four, four? Man, I don't know. Four, four, three, 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 Listen, I'm going to tell y'all guys like this, man. You also got to remember this. I ran track back in college. Mm. So, with a lot of football players, they got football speed, so they can just run for 40 yards, 50 yards, whatever. But, like, I ran the 200. Mm. Olympic Built speed. Yeah. So, like, I ain't tripping on talk to, talk to, talk to, talk to, 60 talk to, yards down. Yeah. Like, I ain't tripping on that. Yeah. I can go ahead and continue to accelerate. Nah, that's, what, that's the difference with a lot of guys. I mean, the Raiders had a track team, though, football bro. speed, mm -hmm. but they don't have that long speed. Yeah. Bro, the Raiders had him, Fabian Washington. I don't even know if these guys were there at this time all together. Jacoby Ford. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hayward Bay. Yeah, he was with Like, him. bro, Jacoby Ford was a track guy. Harry Bay, fast time in the combine. He was a big dude. Out of yeah. Maryland, yeah. Nice. DHB. Nicest guy in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Nicest guy in the world. <laughs> he used to talk to you. Yo, yo, what's up? He's bro? just a nice person, man. On the field, too nice? He was just a nice person all around. <laughs> like, really, just a genuinely nice you person. You never seen him mad? I only played there one year. The year I was there, no. Nah, he was just hella chill. Coach cussed yeah. him out. He just smiled. Yeah. Just chill. You wouldn't cuss him out because his personality. You just wouldn't do it. So he'd do something yeah. bad. What, what coach would be like? You got to be better. <laughs> I remember that, too. Like, we was in practice one time. Ball went right off his helmet. Bow on the post. Bow. <clears throat> They ain't even yell at him. It was just like, whatever. Because his personality, like, that's just how he was. He didn't want to come down on him like that, yeah. If Coach, if coach used to yell at you, how you responding? Depends on how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> really? I know about this. Nah, I really, like, if I'm wrong, like, I could take coaching if yeah. I'm wrong. But if you yell at me for no reason, I'm yelling back, for sure. <laughs> I feel that. Yeah, feel that. I'm not you letting. Were, you were uncoachable. I'm very coachable. Very rarely did I make mistakes because I knew what to do. But if I drop a ball, that's a... That's gonna happen. Right. Um, but what but, if it's fourth quarter, big game, Steelers, Sunday night football, you drop that pass, coach has They to not gonna yell because they know is that the, the is that the reason why y'all never was able to get over mm, the hump and like go into the playoffs or anything? No. Ooh. We you know mm. we uh no no not cool with that. <laughs> we like we play the Steelers, our coaches act like they was playing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they put too much pressure on themselves more so than the players. When you make a mistake, no player is trying to make a mistake. You're not trying to right. drop a ball. You're not trying to get beat. You're not uh, trying to commit a penalty. It just happens. Mm -hmm. So you may, if you yell at me for something like that, if you jump off, so I stop. Like, I got you. Right. I'm cool with that. Right. But it really just depends on how I feel. Like, I go off on somebody if they say something. And I'm feeling bad. I'm gonna go off on them back. I'm a grown man. You're not gonna talk to me how you. I'm not your kid. Mm -hmm. 
But they know that's how I am. So very rarely would a coach yell at me because they know I'm yelling back. The repercussions of your actions. So me, me respond. in conclusion, you were hot. <laughs> no, I think I, I'm a. T, you're I a was a captain head. pretty much on every team I was that on. That does not mean you're not a hothead. Mm. No, I'm just competitive. I've seen you. Yeah, get into it means. I've seen you get into a defense player. I do. It, you a hothead. I do. I, I mean, but that's just how I play. Nah, I what round was you drafted in? Second. Exactly. So when you draft it, don't get when don't, you draft don't, it don't, high. Don't do that. Uh, don't do that. Don't do the finish thing. Okay. I know where he's going with it. So I know he's when going you're with drafted it. later in the rounds, mm -hmm. you get less opportunity. Facts. When you're Facts. drafted Facts. higher, you're going to be given more opportunity. Yeah. So from the get go, you're right. You're right. Like I didn't graduate from high school. So I wasn't supposed to make it. So when I made it, everything I did was all out. If you hold me, I'm gonna tell you don't hold me again. If you hold me again, I'm gonna hit you. Right. I'm gonna okay. warn you one time. Oh, he like you one morning? In practice. Yes. Okay, in practice, practice. I'm just yeah. Like, in the game, I'm not gonna hit I'm you. Gonna I'm gonna talk it. shit, but you, I'm not. And, and so like, it just has to be that way. Yeah. Whereas with, with chip Stan, on your, chip on your shoulders. You're gonna be given opportunities. I get it. I might get one. Mm -hmm. I gotta make the most of it. If I don't, I'm at the crib. True. And so that's probably. Why well, I'm the chip on your shoulder. Yeah. That's real. That's real. No, I mean, you got to have it no matter what in this game just because not for long, number one. And the only way – and I remember what – I think it was John Gruden said that a couple years ago on Hard Knocks, how the only way for you to accomplish your dreams, you got to dash somebody else's, which means mm -hmm. you got to be a nightmare. So I don't think you can play this game at a high level without being an asshole True. to a certain degree. I think that you got to play this game pissed off. And everybody shows it in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mine's might be outwardly. Mm -hmm. um, his might be in the way he prepares. But verbally, he's real calm. Like, before the game starts, I'm extremely calm. Don't come headbutting me. Don't come smacking me in my helmet. Don't come chest bumping me. Like, I'm super, super calm before the game. It's just when the game starts, then I change. Yeah. But, like, I'm not... Getting in the huddle, like, ah, let's giving a rah rah speech. I'm not doing none of that. I'm calm, I'm real chill. It's just when it start, then I don't know what happened. Yeah, I was kind of saying, but man, like, I didn't really like to do a whole lot before the game as far as like that rah rah because we was always out there on the island. Dog, you know how they be like, I'm not about to tell like, us all. Oh, yeah. I never did that one time in my entire life. Not one time in the way over. Hey, 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 that, that, that shit'll fucking clear you. Not mind. one time pass. in my life. Like, dudes will walk by It'll like, clear your nah, bro. Pass. I never did it one nah, time. I said, wait, you never. up there, TJ. I never. Talk to him, Stan. No, it'll clear your fucking well, sinuses. I'll I never know because I've never done it. You had a fucking flu. Not one time. Like, guys, ready. Like, I would see guys on defense before series be like, Hey, let's go! I'm like, God damn. Yeah. But that's a defensive mindset. I never did it. I don't know. I ain't never did them either, so. You never did a slip and salt? You naturally never ready to go. Yeah. Let's, really? yeah. I've, I've like, I'm not maximizing y'all potential. I don't know. You would have been a little better with slip and salt, TJ. <laughs> I guarantee it. Nah. I just, I felt like I ain't need it. Like, I was ready to go once. And that smell is terrible. Like, why y'all putting that's that in That's the point. That's the point. It pisses you off. So, tell me something. Y'all gonna go smell skunk then? Different mind. Well, it still, still smells terrible. Hey, that shit stays with you like days. Yeah. When I hear. Nah, that, that's that's different. Well, you gotta be on your, your P's and Q's for days. Right. So, TJ, I got a question for you. Flipping the switch. You know, our coaches always you can't flip a switch. It's game day, blah blah. blah. You need to prepare like it's game. How do you feel about that that comment, like flipping switches? To a certain degree, mm -hmm. um, when when they say flip a switch, this is how I interpret it: is you can't go less than full speed in practice constantly and think when the game starts, mm -hmm. you just automatically gonna go full speed. Every time it's a pass play, I'm going full speed mm -hmm. if I'm the primary. But if you're the secondary, are you gonna go full speed? No, because in practice, you've gotten into the habit. Um, run plays, like I don't know why defensive players don't look at the receiver stance. Mm -hmm. They gonna tell you right now, pass or run. Yeah. Like even today, you watch football, Dudes will tell you pass or run, the receivers at least by their stance. Yep. And, and so, yep. to a certain degree, I get where coaches would come from. When they were saying it to me when I played, I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things coaches said when I played that I hated. Mm -hmm. And then when I retired and I start coaching little kids, I'm like, fuck, I see why they were saying this. Because mm -hmm. yeah. right. if I can't Same get you to worry about something so small, how can I get you to, how can I rely on you when it's big? True. And, and so, 
I get it, but to a certain degree, yeah. For sure. That's real, man. You mentioned retirement. Obviously, both of you guys you know, been retired for some years now. I want to talk about just the transition briefly from the league to just the real world. Start start with you, Stan. Like, mm. How was that process for you, man? Like, Was it tough? Like, How did you know it was time to hang up the cleats? Well, for one, <clears throat> you, all, you always know that it's going to come a day where your boss going to tell you don't come to work tomorrow. <sighs> like, You know that, number one. Yeah. And I don't know how you feel about this, T, but I, I feel like you probably would agree with it, is that I think for the guys who were able to have that transition and for it to be easier, you have to be willing to go ahead and mourn that death. And I think that all athletes die twice. Mm -hmm. And you got to be willing to mourn it. You got to be willing to accept it. You got to be willing to move on from it and just uh, and own it. I think a lot of guys, they get done playing and they don't want to accept it. You're no longer so and so, the football player. Mm -hmm. You're now so and so, the former player. And they don't want to let go of the football player, you know, because right. you feel like you're Superman. And now when you're not playing anymore, you go back to Clark Kent. So, you have to be willing to own that. And you're going to go through a little bit of a mourning process, but I think that if you don't go through that process, you won't be able to grow from it. You won't be able to come out from up underneath it, and then you won't be able to flourish in whatever your next endeavor is. How long did it take you, looking back, to, to kind of get, get over football? Oh, man. Like, it didn't take a long time, but it definitely didn't happen in 24 hours. I think that uh, it just took time to realize what I wanted to do next. Mm. And once you find out what your next passion is, then it's much easier. But, not, but nonetheless, you're going to have to go through that mourning process. There's no way around it. That's real. That's real. And teach, I remember talking to you in the past, man. I think when you stopped playing, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, you stopped watching football for a little I bit. I wouldn't right? say I stopped watching it, but I wasn't. Uh, it didn't matter as much. Mm -hmm. If I watched it, I watched it. If I didn't, I didn't. But in essence, I could say I stopped watching it on Sunday because I was with my kids. So my kids was playing sports, and their games were pretty much – everything was weekend-based. Mm -hmm. And so only game I would catch would be Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night. That's it. And sometimes I wouldn't even catch the Sunday night game if we was in the championship, which we were a lot. And so uh, <laughs> I, I miss quite a bit of that. <clears throat> and it's, it's different, man. Like – I didn't play a lot of sports growing up. Um, I like I love football. Like I really enjoyed the process of working out, of training. Um, whatever people do, they can do. I don't drink. Never done a drug in my life. Never smoked anything a day in my life. And it's not having nothing to do with sports. So I felt like when I was done playing, I could have still kept playing. My body felt fine. Um, and, you, and when you watch the games, it kind of piss you off like, buddy ass, how's he playing? Yeah. Like he ass, he shouldn't be playing and I'm at home. Right. But you get over that really quick. Mm -hmm. Like I could have, when I retired or I could have played another year or two, teams were calling me and I chose not to because I was an idiot. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to a good team. A good team's a good team because they don't need me. But you don't realize that to that ship is sailed. And, and so like now, I watch every game I can. Um, training the guys that I train kind of keeps me involved in the game, so I'm able to help these young men uh, get better. And I see it. Mm. And they see it, and they're appreciative of it. Um, so that's part of me staying in the game where it feels – I'm not playing, obviously, but it kind of feels like when they have success, you know, I'm a part of that because I've known what I've taught them um, on the field, but then I get these dudes, like, we talk so much, as y'all see, I like to talk. And so, like, I get these dudes, like, we talking life now. Right. How to be a young man and what's gonna happen when you get to the league and you got money. Don't be nice looking and this this one, like, how to avoid the pitfalls that come with it. Yeah. And, and so, it's a lot that comes with it. So, I help them on the field a ton. But I like to think off the field um, I'm helping them a lot, and I am because some of them will call me and be like, "Bruh, I was just in this situation. You the mm -hmm. first one I thought about, and that's the best. It part. had nothing to do with football. It was off the field. Real life impact. Yeah, and so I, I like that part about it. That's real. That's real, man. And so there's one piece of advice because like you got a player. I mean, even Sheldon, you're going to what the year 
eight. You know what I mean? So you kind of pass that point where you you know you yeah. last last few years whenever you decide to make that move. So what would your advice be to like players in that situation who's you know on the brink brink of retirement? You know, as far as you mentioned saying finding that next passion, yeah. like just from going through it, what what's some advice you would give to those players? Oh man, I would probably just say follow your heart. And I think that if uh, if you follow your heart, you you'll have another passion. Like there's something that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I think that as long as you just are willing to follow that and dive all the way into it, give it your all, I think you'll be just fine. And I think that you cannot allow yourself to be engulfed with football being your identity. Mm -hmm. Because when you stop playing, you're not going to know what the fuck to do next. Because that's right. all you think of yourself as is... The football player. Yeah. That's so hard they, to do. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't gonna. That's, Even at the college level, I've been playing that's, that's tough. That's easier said than done. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie. I ain't give a fuck about nothing when I was playing <laughs> but football. That's football. Like, nothing. Yeah. Oh, we wanna do this. No. We wanna no. And, and so, like, I get what he's saying. Mm -hmm. What you're doing right now yeah. is planning for life after football. Exactly. I wasn't doing none of this. I didn't care about nothing but football. Mm -hmm. Let's go do this. No, you can go. That's just how I was. And I mean, your story was different though. I mean, like football, like you said, you don't come from much. You didn't graduate from high school. Yeah. Football changed your life and your family's life. But you know what I'm saying? So it comes a point in time where how y'all introduced us. <laughs> we OG. It ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if you do have other interests while you're playing, you need to tap into that. Yeah. Because while you're playing, people are gonna call you back in 10 minutes instead of the next day because you're playing. Mm -hmm. um, again, I didn't have, like, what other interests do you have outside of sports? If you ask me that, I'm with my kids. And that, like, what, I don't know. Like, I don't, I'm a simple person, man. Like, I live a simple life. As long as I'm good and my kids good, I'm straight. And that, to me, that that's me. And everybody else is different, you know, like they want to buy all this jewelry. I ain't got to show you what I got. I'm comfortable with who I am. If you think I'm broke, think I'm broke. But I ain't going to show you. I don't care what you think of me. Mm -hmm. I'm securing myself. And, and I've always been that way. But do what you're doing yeah. now yeah. because when you retire, you've already been doing this. It ain't, ain't going to be no changes. Now you're just going to do changes. more of it. Yeah. That's real, boy. I was about to take my chains in. So he said, the jewelry. So he took my little broke ass. <laughs> no, I, 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 again, I don't have a problem with people that buy the jewelry and things of that yeah. nature. But I'm not buying it. It's it, your why. Like, why yeah, you, it's, you doing it to yeah. brag? Like, 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 let's like, just yeah. be honest, man. Yeah, let's keep it real. The majority of the things we do that are flashy is for women. Mm. It really is. Yeah. Why we buy a $300,000 car? So when I pull up to the club, Shorty can see me in it. Yeah. She already know what I'm about. Right. You, that's yeah. a fact. Yeah. I ain't doing that. Because she going to see me in that. I'm cool. Just me. Right. Right. <laughs> me, I'm, me is enough. Confident in yourself. I, I'm yeah, confident. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't got to have a $100,000 chain on to show her I got money. But the thing, but the I'm thing, not doing that. But the thing is, and you uh -oh. know this, uh -oh. is that it's a lot of men out there. There's some play sports, some don't. That they're not all the way secure. Oh, one hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? We done been in the locker room. Hell you yeah. done been in the locker room where you see Buddy that's three fifty, and then he walk out the locker room and he got who she wait him? She went oh shit. Oh, we done all seen that. Man. We done be like wait wait oh, wait. Oh my god. She with him? And, and, and bro, we all done seen that. They, we and, seen it. And listen, right? They are the first ones to trip. Mm. They they run what I call the teddy bear game. So like, Bro, hold on, break that down. The teddy bear game, break that down. That's the first time I ever heard that, and I've been okay. around a little bit. Okay. You know, just like I know, skill guys. We have a certain way that we kind of handle ourselves in our single years when we're dealing with the fair sex. We have a certain way that we probably enter the room a little bit more swag. A little bit more. I mean, it's, it's a little bit who you referring to. You say you're skinny guy. Oh, let me, let me, let me, let me, no, but I'm, I will say this, though. I done played with some big dudes. They hella smooth. Come on now. Come now on. I'm not going. But y'all know the big dudes. They don't even got to be big dudes. It could be some skilled dudes that's ugly as shit. That's a lot of y'all. So it's not just the skilled guys. It's the skilled guys that's ugly as shit. They get 
put in this category okay. that he's okay. going yeah. to So no, 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 hold on, stay at, finish this stuff, because I need okay. to hear about this. Break this no, down to Okay, me. right, so like, man, y'all really put me on the spot right now. <laughs> shit, fuck it. So like, no, the difference is, is like, the skill guys. Or, you know, say the small guys, whatever, right? So they go into a spot, mm -hmm. bar, lounge, club, you know, whatever. They're going to go, they're going to speak to the female, you know, spit some game at or whatever. And the thing is, is that they'll probably come off in a much more suave type of way. And I'm not saying all big guys, don't get all more okay. defensive. Okay. It's like, the thing is, is that you tend to see a little bit more of the softer, nice guy. Hey, what are you doing? Let me go ahead and buy you those drinks. Let me pay for your, for your let me pay for your section. Oh, I'll pay for your rent next week too. Oh, like, Dick, oh trust me. Hold on, that, that's what the skinny guys are doing. No, no, no that's, that's what the big guys do. Y'all. So talk about talk about. <laughs> I'm just yeah, rent. Yeah, yeah. I'm just paying on rent. Hey, so, hey. so no. And so what I'm saying is that should happen. The the skill guy, he's a little bit more player with it, okay. and that's why he's probably gonna come. He up may pay the rent, but he's just gonna get to it later on. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Like that. get to it later. That's a boy. I didn't catch that boy. So that's so that's that right there to me is the difference in the approach of the nice guy versus the guy with the red flags. Man, I ain't taking you AKA out to eat at law paying your rent. Like that's just me though. Yeah, you ain't gonna pay for a McDonald's happy meal. No. I'm not paying for no. it. No. Like you can't get a ten TJ. You, 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 you gotta feed the girl. Listen, man, that's just me. Ten piece money? TJ, that's, you gotta feed the girl. Nine, ten dollars. TJ, you got nine, ten. I do, but I don't want to spend it. TJ, you want to fuck kids. on an empty stomach? I got before kids. Before the kids. You talking about TJ? No, it, it's just, and that part of it TJ, is. TJ, you want to fuck on an empty stomach? I don't even want to do that. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that is the biggest pitfall. On an empty of, stomach of players, really right. is 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 women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it really is because yeah. The guys that aren't nice looking, when they get money, they become who they've always wanted to be. Mm -hmm. They become who they've always wanted to be. Now you ain't nice looking, you're nice looking now because you got a lot of money. And so you have all this jury on and you had this nice car and you walk in there with your chin up, letting everybody, they already know who you are. Oh, yeah. If you that type of player, but money to me never changes anybody. It just makes you more who you really All it does is reveal who you've always wanted to be. Now you can be that person. And, and so, again, there's some big dudes that it is. They it's, just got it. it like is. they, they don't matter. It don't matter if they big or not. That's just they just got it. Yeah. And it's the same. It don't matter to me your size. It's and how you feel about yourself. Yeah. And no. if you feel good about yourself, you're gonna approach anybody. With that type of confidence. It ain't the size of the dog no. in a fight. And I'm it's a, the size I, of the fight in the dog. I'm a say, I'm, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say why, and you know this. I know you know this. So I'm gonna say the reason why I say that, and the reason why I feel like it becomes that sticking point is because, like you, you what, six foot? Five eleven. Wow. Man, I'm 6'2", basically. I'm 6'1 and a half. Okay, okay I'm 6'1", I'm 6'2", six, six, whatever. The, and, so, and so the thing is, is that quarterbacks, running backs, receiver, DB, safety, we can walk into a room and we can look like a regular guy because of our build. Damn, so, what do you do? Exactly. That's very true. So if, yeah. you, get, so if you get some 6'5", D tackle, it's they like, okay. assume you play a sport. He's yeah. a wrestler. He's a football player. He's something yeah. because he's so fucking big and tall. Yeah. So the skilled guys can blend in. For sure. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my God. I already kind of liked his outfit. Now now I find out that he plays for the Ravens. Oh, oh, shit. oh, shit. We could like, blend in in our time plan. Yeah, There's no blending in now because of social media. Yeah. Everybody knows who everybody is. But when we came into the league, yeah. Social. Blending in was very, very possible. Yeah. Very true. Nowadays, there's no blending in. They know who you are. They know where you're from. They know how you look. They know your situation. Yeah. And so it was very different when we were playing than what it is now. That's very nice. Right. No, that's very mm -hmm. nice. Now, shifting gears real quick, because I got to ask you this. Mm. We are Don't hurt on Don't hurt on I ain't going to hurt them. Deliver it softly. I'm going to deliver it softly. We are, we are in Arizona, Super Bowl week. 
your bagels had a very, very tough loss, and they're not in the game. I saw some stuff. I know you was a little upset about it. I just want you to, like, what are your feelings about the game? You feel like, you feel like your team was kind of... They got cheated. Mm. They got cheated, and everybody knows that. That was a penalty at the end of the game. That was rough in the passer. But we've just seen Patrick Mahomes look like he's going to run out of bounds, and he stays in bounds and scores a touchdown. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. And so, but you can't give a team an extra down when they don't get the first down, then call a penalty and give them another down, uh, a set of downs. Mm -hmm. And then when you call that rough in the passer, it was holding on the left tackle, but you don't call that holding. And so I feel like they got shafted. I mean, you call intentional grounding. P. Ryan was right there. That's not intentional grounding. You called all these different penalties, and the Bengals, they didn't play well. And I don't think the Chiefs played well, but they won the game. Mm -hmm. and, and so I just would, like when you're watching a game as a fan, which we all are now, minus you, and you still may be a fan as you play, is when it's a bad call, we know it's a bad call. Mm -hmm. There's no way we know it's a bad call, and they keep it a bad call. It should be changed right away because we know with today's technology, what's right and what is it? They should be able to change it. I don't give a damn if somebody's telling you in your ear, you missed a call. Go make it now. Make it right. right. And to me, that, that's the biggest thing because you put too much into this as players to feel like you've been cheated. Mm -hmm. Like you put so much. I don't think guys understand like when your body is banged up, what you go through, how many shots you take. Just I mean, I that. broke bones in my back and played. And... You play through so much oh, yeah. because it means so much to you. Uh -huh. And when you feel like it's been taken away from you. It hurts. Yeah. And, and so I, I do feel like the Bengals, uh, they got shafted in that game. I, even to this day. And I did put some stuff up like yeah, it was yeah. some BS. Yeah. Because that's what I thought at that time. And I still feel that way. That's why I think the Eagles going to beat them. I mean, mm. TJ, I'll say this, man. Like, y'all were fucked up before kickoff. Mm. So and why, why I'm going to say this because, listen. I think Cincinnati's a better team than Kansas City. Let me off cut the, him off, off real quick. Off the rip. Just think about this. The Ravens win, coin flip for who plays at home. Uh, neutral site, if Buffalo wins, everything was against Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Every single that. thing was against Cincinnati. And Coach Taylor even said that. And, and so it was just, it was unfortunate. Power real quick, Sorry. though. I, Sorry. No, just for clarity, though, are, are you, when you say they've been cheated and you're, you're starting to list things, the coin flip, this and that. You sound like you think this is like this is playing. I mean, we, we no, saw we, Adrian this is Foster yeah. talking about Arian Foster. There's a, Arian Foster's a script, bro. Right, he tripping. Yeah, he's tripping. Like the fact that they, even, no the fact script. that he even, and I don't know him. He was in our era of playing, yeah. but I don't know him. Met him a few times. Come on, bro. Like, why would you even say that? Maybe he was joking. I don't know. And you know what they say? And he's a smart dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they always say it's rather to be thought of as an idiot than open your mouth and erase all doubt. Like, really? Like, come on. No, that ain't, no. I mean, he's from California. What I'm saying is. Oh, what you say? That's not a little, oh, 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 what you saying? What? Walk out. I mean, he's from California. I'm and assuming he's, he's settled in Texas, right? Uh, I know where he's yeah. from. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Like, I deserve that one. I deserve that one. I just, I deserve that one. I just think that because the league doesn't look at the Bengals as a cornerstone franchise, their ownership. Mm -hmm. It's like, they the Bengals, we can do whatever we want to them. What are they gonna do? Yeah, right. That's, that's how I took it. See, and TJ, to me, man, like I said, I feel like Cincinnati is a better team than, uh, than Kansas City. I don't feel like they're that much better where they can play a B plus game and still beat Kansas City. I think they're a better team. I personally think Joe Burrow, best quarterback in the league, me personally, because He's not as flashy as Mahomes or Allen, but he gets the job done. It, to me, he's the closest thing in this league that you have to a Tom Brady. Mm. He's not flashy in all of the attributes, but he gets the job done. Now, where y'all fucked up, the Burrowhead Stadium, mm. the goddamn mayor doing that, uh, that motherfucking video. Like, I don't like, mind stuff like that. Like, no, because, no, listen, right? I know this is a DB, right? If I know that I'm playing you this week, I'm not going to talk much shit during the week because even though I may feel that I'm better than you, I could just have an off day 
and you can have an on day, and I'm going to look like shit on But I think once the game starts, all that will prevent is somebody from talking shit during the game. The, Bengal, the biggest problem I thought the Bengals had was, who's the Chiefs' best player? On defense. Kelsey. On defense. Oh, defense. Chris, Jones. Chris Jones. Exactly. It's Chris Jones. They let Chris Jones beat them. Yeah. That was my only – going into the game, you knew Chris Jones was their best player on defense. Going into the game, you knew protecting Joe Burrow was the most important thing. So how do you let the one player that can wreck everything – Wreck it. That was my only problem. But y'all have like three the offensive end, linemen, like right. But they, they, they didn't let him. He just, yes, he just made they play. put him on. They put him on the right tackle, and they let him go one on one. Yeah. It don't matter who the right tackle. He can't block him. Make the back chip, slide, make the guard help. Make sure the center's turning that way every time, yeah. so that somebody, a Frank Clark, Dana, they got to beat me. Yeah. Right. I'm not letting Chris Jones get instant pressure. That to me was the only thing is don't let the best player wreck the game, and he did. That's my only problem. But you know yeah. what your offensive game plan is. You can't always shot, slide the line to the D lineman because now you're messing up protections. Now they can bring the blitzes. But no part of the game plan away. should be if he's lined up as a three Neutral, technique, we're going to turn the yeah. uh, center that way. If he's out on the – see, what the uh, Chiefs were doing, they put him – they put him in a seven technique because he wasn't yeah, in nine. They put him in a seven did. technique. Yep. Y'all look it up. I don't mean to get technical football terms. <laughs> and they were showing the guy outside of him as if he was blitzing to make the guard not help and have a guy over the guard. And the center now in turn can turn that way because they had somebody mugging the A-gap. Yep. But sometimes you just got to say, Spags ain't crazy. He ain't going to blitz. He want to play a too, too high shell. No. Spags is a that's what he does. Oh yeah. But, but you know, even in doubt, going, even when going in doubt, to 07, that, he, that's he how Spags blitz, is. But he go blitz regardless. It, it, so and once he see the center turn, you know he goes. And, and that's why the Bengals were three and zero up until this point because sure. he wanted to keep blitzing. Yep. And he realized like, I got to change my tactics. They didn't blitz much at all. Chris Jones single handedly, I thought won that game for him. Sure. And this weekend, you ain't doing it. I don't see it. I mean, you're a defensive lineman. You're not doing the Eagles' offensive line how they did the Bengals. If Chris Jones does that, he a bad man. So, look, you know what it felt like in contract year. He in contract No, yeah, he got another year. One more year. It's not guaranteed. You who, know when they guaranteed. Who, 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 that, that, no, the way who he playing, that shit guaranteed. Yeah. Oh, Chris, oh, Chris, Always oh, guaranteed when he's Hey, up. well, the way he playing, that contract guaranteed. He, he, he want to get cut. Cut me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Please he want to get read up, though. Please come. So you know how I feel. Like, you and your bad. He not. Like, nothing no, about this, to stop this. Not, Eagles not offensive cut, line. Yeah, it's not, not about cutting. Them. I'm talking about he want more guaranteed money. Next yeah, year. absolutely. But, like, he. He going to get. It's a contract yeah, for sure. year. Like, for sure. So why not? Why not? He want to be in the AD world. He's going to get it. He's that good of a player. Chris Jones is that good. Chris Jones basically has shown he can do what Aaron Donald is doing. Not to the degree. Yeah. But oh, damn shit. near like it. It's a three technique. Like, he going to get that. paid, but I'm eager to see can he do that with this Eagles offensive line. I don't think he's I'm eager to see that. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. because Kelsey is not big, but he nice. Hell, think about it. Kelsey has to slide to he's the name one-on-one. On one. Outside of it's the run Chris game. Jones, the Kansas gonna struggle. who concerns you on that defensive line? Frank and uh, – Maybe Frank. Uh, okay. Carlos. Carlos done that. You play with Carlos. Yeah, so, so, so. Lane Johnson – Mm. Oh, he, he, he lock you down over there. Mulata's not bad either at the left tackle. Yeah, so you don't have to help your uh, tackles. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to help tackles. And then up the middle, Kelsey. It's you got good. Kelsey. And so if they're able to pressure Jalen Hurts, they're better on the defensive line than I thought. I, I, I just don't see it happening. And the part of me feels like because they got a gift yeah. in the AFC championship game. And my son's favorite team is the Chiefs. I'm going for the Eagles. Mm. I just don't think Kansas City's going to be able to stop that run game. I do, yeah. I feel like That's it. always been a good I don't think they're going to be able to stop that. I look at how the 49ers, Fred Warner, all those linebackers, they were struggling against that run game. Yeah. In Kansas City, I don't know who their linebackers are. I don't think that they're going to be able to stop Nick Bolton, Willie Gay. Forget the other dude. Exactly. 
But they'll probably but play you know more the 49ers linebackers. linebackers. Yeah, I mean, it, so it's... I think that run game, that's what's going to slow everything down for Kansas City. Now, if Kansas City mess around and they can get up, mm. I don't think Jalen Hurts can run down Pat Mahomes. I, I just... I, mean, I don't think he can. But if, it, but if it's tight... Do they, they play can, too high, the Chiefs? I mean... Because if you play single high, I mean, you got Devontae, Devontae and AJ. Smith and AJ. And then Goddard and Mitt, like, the no. Eagles, they have weapons. Yeah. And then... Joe's position, Bradbury been a high level corner. Oh my God. Slay has been a high level corner. Kansas City really, they don't. They don't have a bona fide number one receiver. Yeah, and they so, got Kelsey, but he's and not a Gardner receiver. Johnson is a corner that plays safety, safety and covers yeah. very well. He's uh -huh. smaller, but he can play. Yeah. And so can he negate Kelsey? Kelsey is real physical. That kind of gets. Um, lost in translation a little bit because he's such a finesse player. But at the line of scrimmage, he'll get physical with guys. I, I just feel like Kansas City, they have maybe, say, the best seven players in the game. They may have four or five of them. But overall, Philly, yeah, I Philly. think the Eagles are just a better team. I agree. I did, you I did. think coaches going to play a, a big role in this, though? You got an Andy Reid experience, been there, done it. Excelled at oh, yeah. Level. I'm sure. You Andy, think get, is it, will it be a coaching match I think and Andy, not a, a player match? I think Andy Reid is going to have a few wrinkles that Philly is not going to be ready for. Yeah. I think Philly's got a fast defense. They're physical. They got a great pass rush D line. What they had? Four guys that all had 10 Five plus, guys 10 plus sacks. Oh, yeah. But I think that Crazy. Andy Reid, just with that wizardry that he has from his offensive genius, I think that he's going to have a few wrinkles that Philly is not going to know what hit him mm -hmm. on certain plays. Now, with that being said, because you have Pat Mahomes and you have one extra week for him to heal from that uh, ankle, no. ankle sprain. Yeah. Now, he's man, not going to be They better get out of here with that fucking you, high ankle sprain shit, man. Now, they're not, what you're to say. They not getting me with that. You play football. Yeah. You had a high ankle sprain? Yes. Could you play the next week? No. No. Exactly. That wasn't a high ankle sprain. They, they as y'all youngsters would say, they was capping. <laughs> so, what you, so what you thought it was? A sprain. No. That's not a high ankle sprain. You're so you not playing you the next. just an ankle sprain. Yes. You are okay. nobody I, I, I feel that. is playing the next that. week with a high ankle sprain. So they sprain. lying to try to just make the, the whole aura of Mahomes seem a little Jordan bigger. Jordan flu game, I guess. I don't know. Like, you're yeah. not playing with a high ankle sprain the next week. Not it's true. virtually impossible. But, I don't care what kind of treatment you but, You're not even going back in that game but, with a high ankle sprain. But now this right here. Any other position, you're right. You're not playing next mm. week. But he plays. You even but you got to be able to play yeah, it and drop it back. Like, yes. But do you need it as much do, as, if, as if you're a receiver this, or a corner? No. That's, that's what I'm but saying. But the fact that he was able to practice Wednesday, I said ain't nothing wrong with him. The fact that he was able to practice on Wednesday. He looked nasty at first. I ain't gonna lie to you. Mm -hmm. he, he definitely got bent. The fact that he was able yeah, to practice I, I, showed yeah, me. Yeah, I remember all the, all the replay. It's, it's, it's not to me. I didn't think it was a high ankle sprain. The fact that he could practice. So you think it's just a regular ankle? Yeah, I think it's just a regular sprain. He'll be fine. That that, that, that wouldn't be to me a part of the game that if I'm a Chiefs fan that would worry me. Andy Reid is gonna have an advantage because he's been there, done that. He's not gonna. Get nervous. His heart rate is not going to rise up when it's a crucial moment. Mm -hmm. Maybe like Nick Sirianni because it's his first time in the big game. But you got the best game plan in the world, Andy Reid. Best game plan in the world. Players got to go execute. True. So we, we, we can say uh, how much will coaching play a part. Coaching will play a part. But if I don't execute, your coaching ain't shit. Mm -hmm. And so it always comes down to the players. Coaching in the NFL matters, but it always comes down to the players. That's real. We're going to find out, man. In summary, I'll say this before we close. I thought the Bengals would win that game because they have the best receiver in Cincinnati Bengals history. In That's, not true. That's not so true. So I, I just assume that. That's not true. I just, I just assume. And they, and they also have the, set, they also have the second is best. best. Uh, Chad, is, T. Chad, T. Chad, T. Higgins. Chad yeah. is the best receiver in Bengals history, bro. I get, I, you know, it's, it's, definitely, it's probably Chad, but then Jamar is definitely number two. Nah, he not number two. I, I can't really think of nobody else. T. Higgins, Higgins would, would be number nah. three. No, no, he not number two. AJ Green, Green number two. Number four. AJ Green. Green number two. AJ, yeah. And then I'm number three. Then I'm number three. It's Chad, AJ, and then me. Yeah, I was waiting for it. Yeah. I was waiting for it. Now, they may pass us. But right now, but like you today. ain't there yet. Yes, man. They on their way. Yes. But the Bengals have done a hell of a job with like developing receivers. Because oh I mean, man. I didn't even bring up Isaac Curtis, um, Chris Collinsworth, Carl Pickens, yep. Darnay Scott. I remember them. Yeah. I remember them.
Man, I'll just mess with your TJ, man. I'll see you a legend and uh man stand as well. Appreciate y'all for man, hopping man. on, man. Players Day off. Oh. Happy to do it. And uh yeah, man. It's time to go out. It's, it's Super Bowl weekend. So I know I got the moves. So let's figure this thing We gotta out. work in the morning, man. We gotta, you know, we got we gotta work. Yeah, we gotta work, y'all. Hey, it's been oh, fun. I gotta work. It's I, been gotta, fun I, I don't know what they gotta do. <laughs> We out though, man. He Appreciate known across the globe from Dallas to Compton. Yeah. He was signed to the game, but then he grew up. Now in that executive role, picking a shoot up. Couple bitches around, really trying to choose up. That oyster perpetual, rolly busting his shoot up. Like as a dime. Kobe Bryant.